Hello and welcome to the next episode of Argument a Podcast. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the recent event what happened to Mr. Sushil Kumar. He was arrested especially with the charges being leveled on him with regard to the murder of one such wrestler as well and also many of you must be knowing it as well. So joining with me is uh, Ryan James. He is actually he's a he's a really good uh, anchor and uh, he can he, he really has good interest in sports law in particular. and uh, since he d- he does try to cover especially with regard to football and basketball as well so i i feel that he since he kind of does a, f- a fair amount of research as well on the sports scenario in india and also do check out his channel uh, decap uh, decap decapitino wherein he talks about very casual conversations with with, with several people and also about their experiences as well also he is again the anchor of this re- really good show called suits and sports as well do check it out on youtube and also he's the co-founder of fantastic arena so welcome ryan to argument a podcast wow joel thank you so much for that uh, introduction uh, it's actually an honor to be here cuz uh, i think all of us know that argument a podcast has been doing brilliant as of now cuz they've been featured in edx and today they won the newspaper as well so the honor is mine to be here thank you so much for calling me yeah uh, so so ryan like uh, how are you are uh, everything all good how's the situation everything yeah bro all good going going fine uh, we have exams next week so all the haven't started studying that's there and from a sports perspective yes the euros and copa america started so some excitement uh like especially since the recent the, the, the news as well of the player who had fallen uh, who had fallen in the right government. right that was really it was really sad and there are few sources saying that he might not play and he's actually a top player christian eriksen like i played dream league soccer and he's my striker there as well so he's it's kind of disappointing i see yeah so ryan uh, tell, tell just brief me about how the sports industry is in india and uh, how far is it actually evolved with, with time so be it the laws and also be it the current space as such with regard to all the sports or at least some sports which come into the highlight in most instances See, the sports industry in india i'd say india because of its population as obviously the population has been an advantage if you notice uh, virat kohli today has more followers than lebron james let's say lebron james is actually in terms of global recognition he has it more than virat kohli like global influence but if you notice because virat kohli being an indian maximum like if you notice a big amount of his followers are from india and that's why he has you know more followers so the population has evidently made a big impact and india is the next big thing when it comes to sports because if you notice uh, cricket has already reached its top and cricket there are still chances of it becoming bigger football is growing at a very very good pace uh, in terms of national football uh, it isn't but when it comes to the league we have indian super league which is doing really well and at the same time you have all of these other sports you know that haven't reached the limelight let's say cricket is probably at an a a a plus football is at the b and then you have every other sport that's below that so um it is growing uh, we should but the problem is yeah uh, the same thing cricket gets so much of limelight that the other sports just get neglected so we have so many sports leagues that never succeeded but yeah fingers crossed india is the next big thing for sports everybody knows it and hopefully uh, yeah the, the industry is really big even in terms of uh, you know job opportunities and stuff anything in regard with sports always involves you know high revenue and yeah that's the, that's the thing in general and coming to sports uh, so uh, sorry sports law uh, one thing i've noticed in the indian industry if you ask any sports lawyer they will tell you this that is that when it comes to uh, educating the athletes in terms of sports it's not done properly because in the us in the uk every sports player you know they know how the law works in regard with their sport but in india the athletes don't get educated so that's why if you notice the amount of athletes that get caught in legal disputes is so much from doping to contracts because i was talking to shivil kaushik the other day the cricketer and he was telling me as to how most of them a contract is put before them let's say puma or any brand it's like a contract could be like 20 pages long and these guys don't read it they just go sign it and so many of them fall into legal trouble so they don't have that education so every every sports lawyer today will tell you this and india is working towards that like the lawyers of today the sports lawyers they are more, most of them are like the young dudes you know like 25 to 30 that age group and they are working towards 
building up a uh, you know a uh, regulation or so that can help the athletes also get educated in terms of sports yeah that's a very fair point uh, like uh, when i actually formulated this session with ryan so ryan has come full prepared as well with the, with the sports attire so do explain why uh, why you come come in this form i'm sorry why i have come in like oh, the sports you, attire in, in the sports attire as such no see yeah, in general yeah you want to wear when you're going to talk about sports even joel's wearing kipsta how many of you knew joel had a kipsta t-shirt so obviously the topic is sports you want to wear so i usually would have worn a lebron james jersey or a man united jersey but then i realized one thing you know ki you know when you wear those jerseys you are a fan so i thought okay let me wear a jersey where i'm not a fan and i'm a representative of you know 20000 people representing the college so i chose my college jersey and yeah, yeah that's why <laughs> yeah so uh, coming back to it like uh, how how have you analyzed the situation especially with the recent incident which happened to uh, shir kumar and also the entire scenario with wrestling because i think uh, it's it's very uh, he's actually a very revered person if you know it like he actually has the padma shri as well and also he, many of his interviews also is very humble he he's always very humble as well and he's been training a lot, a lot of people as well under him but uh, now they also considering that wrestling was also born into a bigger format in in dangal as well the movie dangal as well so how do you see this incident which happened to him and the entire impact not just on, on the sports industry in particular but also in wrestling as a sport in india see if you notice yeah like you said sushil kumar the the laurels he's brought to our country is big like if today he was at his peak and let's say he was representing let's say he was participating in olympics this year so if you notice every year olympics you have two people holding the flag in front a woman and a man, and a man and a man so it's uh, this time i think among the women you have mary com and uh, you know uh, pb sindhu who's uh, among the candidates to hold the indian flag and lead the contingent so i'll tell you if sushil kumar was actually participating and he didn't have any of this i'll tell you he i i think it would be sushil kumar and one of those women holding the flag cuz i still remember he was at during olympics also he was like our only hope to win a gold and he won a silver and yes so that's how big an uh, athlete he is so in terms of wrestling such an event like see even recently something happened with christian eriksen and even after that my mom was like you know i do my mom is contemplating is like you know how dangerous sports is you know stuff like this happens so now you tell me wrestling being a contact sport itself if you have like the the person who heads like the mecca of wrestling that sushil kumar he getting involved in something like this i don't think people would like see it is general mentality it makes sense to not like i i don't know i would also contemplate sending my kid for wrestling where a sport it's being inculcated like this cuz it, it it brings bad image to the sport in general and it's it's obviously a a situation which which nobody calls for right you can't you can't expect a senior to do something like this for every athlete the, like for me example the basketball court is a sacred place mm. and i don't know if you can't respect that you're not respecting sports altogether yeah like just walk me through um, example if there's a sports injury as such for example if if the injury is so hard uh, what are the kind of the uh, setbacks which come like in the case of like if you if you're familiar with, with certain aspects of of immunity as well while playing or while uh, while performing in a particular sport if there's a, a high chance of high risk of injury or even leading leading to worse uh, scenarios how is it really dealt in uh, in the current scenario like not not, not in this case in, in, not not just in this case but in, but in general as well while playing any sport as such what is the immunity which someone gets especially considering the high risk or the high injury as such see sports in general we all know you know it, it comes with it you know you're you're bound to get injured so once again in regard with this it depends on the intensity you know sometimes uh, you 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 get injured but then you want to go back and play you aggravate it then some injuries do end careers for real like i think every i have so many coaches actually if you look in india today many of the coaches they they wouldn't have played for india so you ask them why they'll say it's injury and uh, injuries can happen very easily in sports and so that in that regard you know there's a lot of things that people say you know coaches always tell to stretch properly stretch stretching is one of the most important things stretching warm up and you can easily get an injury because you never know you just run into a person both your knees hit each other you get an acl and 
some people do recover from an acl positively and they are able to run and jump like before in ligament it's on your knee mm-hmm. okay so uh, there's there's two two injuries that you get acl and mcl and it's one of the most dreaded injuries like as a basketball player i'm scared of it even footballers get it anybody can get it you know it's like when you're running at so what happens during this injuries while you're running in a let's just say you're running in a straight line and you all of a sudden decide to change your direction your knee jerks and a tuck sound comes and that's and you you need a surgery for that you have to get you need a surgery and after that surgery you have to like you know at least 3 months of bed rest Mm-hmm. so that's that's the worst thing for an athlete like today even if i get injured in my hand i've got a ligament tear so many times and i i tell my mom no i don't want to go to the doctor because the doctor will tell you know four weeks you you can't do anything and it's it's that but as athletes we need to remember that you know our body is the most important thing so we need to whenever there's an injury we have to sit back and let it heal because it injuries can aggravate very easily and they can end your career yeah especially like since it brought the aspect of career as such um if you look at similar other sports as well uh, especially with uh, like considering the current situation the reputation of the entire industry that state not just like over here it's wrestling but l- let's take the ipl for instance uh, you had several of the players who were allegedly part of the betting uh, betting scene they were they were actually being removed or banned from from playing for further uh, for, for for a brief period of time as well and you also had players who also had worse uh, health condition just brief me like if you could just tell me a few events which have actually shaped uh, the the industry especially with these kind of events betting or beat like see, the, um, reputation at stuff see you just uh, mentioned the the cricket right so i think the ipl instance i'll give you that cuz if you notice today 90% of the people who don't watch IPL you ask them why they say it's just that one sport fixing incident hmm. and that one incident has cut out the viewership just imagine IPL's viewership today is so high it's immensely high so just imagine if you could still if if the same dignity was there uh, it would have been at a different level today uh, so the indian premier league alone contributes to the indian gdp that's how big IPL is okay you, there is a visible impact and you could see uh i have done the statistics uh, for a project and i saw ki when the sport fixing incident i think in 2013 after that you have to see the viewership the broadcasting the sponsorship everything just dropped significantly you know mm-hmm. it was like a big drop and that shows you know cuz see sports we sports person sports persons we we keep on saying that the biggest thing of a sports person is ethics you know it's your ethics your moral conduct and stuff like that so so the very fact that you know if you notice even in a school or college the reason people respect sports sports players or the sports teams because they have a leadership role that's what the, they are growing leaders they have good leadership abilities and all of it and to see you know i think that time it was players like shrishant alleged i'm not saying anything it was alleged sports fixing case mm-hmm. um shrishant so i'm saying he he was a world cup winner so i'm saying when you see players like that fall into things like this then chennai super kings Rajasthan Royals there the people from their ownership being involved it you know degrades the entire sanctity of sports things like this sports every sports person also believes sports to be you know it's a sacred thing for us it's not just going out and playing sports is like it's equivalent to you know i wouldn't say it's equivalent to god but we do given that same god status hmm. so such such instances obviously do you know remove i've been saying sanctity yes that is the word it removes the it's like all all the while you know a person who's a like in school you'd have people who are you know good boys and all of a sudden that guy starts trash talking he becomes a big smoker or something you say his his sanctity is gone so it's the same thing in that regard sports it loses its you know charm yeah like you were saying that it's given a like sports are given a particular god like god status because even in even in wrestling as well the wrestlers go until jay bajrang bali because his strength is such so similarly also it's considered kind of like your like your duty or your service what you do as well to a team or a country as such but um, like coming to the question okay like um, can accusations or allegations uh, deter a sports person for example the like there was some news that if the padmashri would be removed as such from mr suresh kumar but i don't know but though there's actually a provision as well where the president can cancel uh, uh, as such but then 
how how do we differentiate between the sports person and the sports and the man and, and the man so basically differentiating between the man uh, and, and his personal life and and things which, which have happened around him and also how he is on the ground and on the field how do these two can these two be divorced from each other or, or these two have to these two are uh, in it together so that's why you uh, you you might have calls for cancelling his awards or even similar kind of players as well removing their awards or removing the status so does that's that particular aspect also come into play or even example if a player is, is facing a sexual harassment case will the player be known for that particular case or will it will he be known for the for the game he or she plays see uh, once again that depends on the type of award right now so tomorrow uh, shrishant can still win a man man of the match award in a cricket match in a cricket match he can win the man of the match award they're not you don't particularly look at the external factor now if you look at an award which is given based like see every every award has a criteria so if you're giving an award based on how a person is all together that includes what they've contributed to the country from the sports perspective and otherwise you can do it accordingly so now i i'm not going to give an indian example uh, lebron james for example so now i'm not saying it because i'm just a fan of him you notice he's he's been the uh, mecca of basketball since uh, michael jordan retired and if you notice he uh, grew up and today he's built an entire school in cleveland okay and he's built a cleveland and he, he's built an entire school free of cost for all students who study there and also uh, he he funds a lot of college students so he spent i think easily he spent oh, like you know 500 600 million in terms of you know uh, giving to the community so if you notice he's done it both on and off the field and there are there are memes out there saying you know when donald trump was campaigning he would take shots at lebron so people would be like you know lebron james builds actual schools it's called the i promise school in cleveland so i'm saying if you notice uh, i'm not solely saying it because i'm his fan i'm saying if you notice he's contributed it's evident that he's contributed to the society and he's contributed to the society and other uh, this thing so now in terms of so if you have to give a public award over there you can consider him now at the same time if you have a a, a player who's you know seen it's it's recorded on camera that you know these guys uh, so there's always a nba player named james harden who's always you know they say james harden spotted at a strip club so i'm saying um, i'm not saying now that's a bad thing altogether but see as per your awards criteria you want to see moral ethics of that person what they've done how they've contributed to the society and how what big of an impact they are making as a player so yeah you look at all the criteria and once again um, in regard with what you asked whether it's it's fair to a player that anybody can go appeal and stuff once again that's that's that that's based on the discretion of the panel who's selecting you know sometimes definitely there have been a lot of instances where you know players have lost out on winning a good reputed award because of one person going and saying something at the same time we don't know it could have been true could have been false at the same time it's gone the opposite way also when someone has done something nobody reported it and he ended up winning an award so that works just like that we can't unfortunately there is no say in that but let's let's hope that the system gets better in india in terms of sports also the system overall is getting better as we uh, progress cuz sports law is getting its recognition and sports lawyers are taking charge so let's hope that the overall system gets better yeah like are there any committees which overlook into these matters so especially if you consider even the ipl as well or even like uh, leave leave leave, leave uh, cricket as well let's take football or even wrestling as well or even other sports are there any committees which look into the overall uh, functioning of the game and also is there a separate ethics committee or is, there, is it like have you come across any uh, similar kind of committees not not just in india but also abroad wherein they look into the behavioral ethics also also the moral conduct as well and also the entire game at large see uh, i know about committees yes there, there will definitely be committees particularly so now it varies okay now let's take uh, ipl for example ipl is privatized the bcci just holds particular shares so it's it's uh, so there are so many uh, so i was actually talking to another lawyer who told about how uh, you know one let's say we start a league today you can create the league such that you create your own doping and anti doping rules you know it does not have to apply the same way how it is being applied for every sport hmm. so now just because ipl is privatized they can do a lot of things that they want without you know uh, involvement from the bcci per se so in terms of you know ethics committee um, 
there are of course there won't be i don't know a few sports will have ethics committee there would be a board looking after things but now let's take rcb for example i think what happened uh, recently is um, i think there was a there's a, a cricket podcast from australia and those guys interviewed two players i think uh, kyle jamison and dan christian and in that uh, i think yeah christian they they spoke quite a few things and what happened is uh, happened rcb later on asked yeah. they happened to speak yeah he said that is fine he said that yeah kohli try to uh, get jameson to bowl a few balls and uh, what happened is rcb ended up asking those guys to take the video down cuz apparently uh, whatever done inside the bubble all of those you know belongs to rcb you know mm-hmm. whatever any video recorded because it was in the duration of ipl and even in the in the united states for example uh, you have so the university games so like in india it's not like the way it is in us in the us you have something known as the ncaa nca that does the whole you know every sport in the us in the college level is run by them so they have their entire panel they have one one panel that's looking at every players you know doping status whether they are consuming illegal drugs then they have another so i think there is a movie i forgot its name in which you know it shows that any nca player let's say i'm playing for a college over there i'm not allowed to take any sort of donation so i can't take endorsements you can't sign contracts with big brands at the while you are studying in college so they have a committee that's looking at that and this guy was even caught for like one of the teachers uh, one of the coach's wife was dropping this guy to school was dropping him to college every day and they 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 put that also they flagged that saying you can't take that sort of help also from someone and later on yes it was the, the he put in a request and the decision was changed but yeah so there are obviously in regard with every tournament there is a board like obviously they will they will you know delegate the work off there will be one uh, obviously for ipl there will be one thing that's monitoring all contracts one monitoring all uh, doping and anti doping so like even doping uh, what i was told is that you know after every match they do particular tests so there are obviously organi- not organizations there are committees that are made in regard with sport so it varies from sport to sport it's not the same yeah and like since since you spoke about contracts as well could you like uh, are like briefly t- tell us the kind of contracts you are aware of with regard to sports fees so be it endorsements or be it the time frame where they can play or tra- or training and things like that how flexible are these contracts and also what are the different kind of contracts you come across different i say every every sort of contract everything like we know everything requires a contract and especially in sports sorry the amount of money that's involved definitely from from you know virat kohli's contract with rcb all the way to you know the stadium operations the guy who's just let's leave the guy let's say the guy who's a bouncer working at the stadium there's a contract from that virat kohli 17 crores all the way to this guy earning 2000 rupees per day so in terms of the types of contract it's it's all over um again adding to that contract law does in terms of flexibility like you asked um uh, you can think of uh, the recent uh, to the, uh, when when corona virus came obviously they stopped uh, the entire they stopped football and stuff and if you notice messi's issue was actually in regard with contract law once again where there was a claim that uh you know uh, so messi actually uh, how contracts work in uh, football for some star players is you have an opt in contract so let's say i'm signing okay uh, let's let's stick to messi messi signed uh, a 3 2 plus 2 years so they have a option where they play for 2 years and the third year uh, this is not messi it's just an example uh, they sign a contract fixed for 2 years and they have a option to enter into the contract for the third year also at the end of 2 years so messi reached a situation there and he wanted to uh, opt out of the contract yeah so now what what happened is barcelona claimed that his duration was over his duration to do that i don't know i don't know the specifics but apparently it's 10 days or so after the last match i can be wrong once again that barcelona played or uh, last match of the tournament that they participated in so once again all these aspects came into place you know uh, corona virus because of that the duration got shifted and a lot more things happen so when it comes to covid also because of covid i think there are clauses in the contact contracts particularly that says you know due to any national calamity which affects the entire league they will obviously extend the contract 
so yeah that's the thing and in regard with messi's case i don't think that became a court legal issue because of only because of messi's bond with barcelona so yeah contracts are definitely flexible in sports but yeah not 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 simply like corona was definitely a, a special circumstance otherwise contracts are fixed you know every player it's like if they don't call you for a re- uh, extension of the contract it's done it gets over as per the speculated time yeah that's uh, absolutely fair point uh, also uh, like going like uh, actually you, you guys must check out uh, some of his articles as well and uh, like then like uh, what uh, what really made you feel that there's an influence of celebrity uh, like th- there is celebrity influence in the sports for example how far does ipl or or isl reach out as because of the celebrities as such so how far is that holding true today with several celebrity sports people also uh, uh taking huge stakes in companies or even sports companies as well or even sports teams as well so how is that uh, debate still alive as such yeah like i said in india is what i specifically stated and uh, i'll give you simple examples my sister loves virat kohli she supports fc goa why because virat kohli is a owner of fc goa at the same time when sachin uh, if you notice the first season isl final was in uh, was in mumbai it was between kerala and kolkata and if you notice it was in mumbai it was like a a, a battle between saurav ganguly fans and sachin tendulkar fans so i'm saying just like this even even my dad has a slight edge for kkr only because of shahrukh khan hmm. and india's population is so big first of all second of all india people respect the athletes like live athletes sorry celebrities they are given a god status we all know that so the moment they do something it's it's it, the influence happens directly so even when even when sachin had uh, uh, bought a, a badminton team people were supporting them because all sachin fans fell for him immediately so that 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 is a evident trend that's there and even today uh, in terms of uh, for sure you know preeti zinta fans john abraham fans still support uh, northeast united fc i don't know if he's still asso- associated but yes it, they made an evident impact and if you look at sports like uba was a basketball league there was no sport there was no celebrity in, you know promoting any team i think the biggest was ranvijay sinha but he's not very prominent like the others kabaddi kabaddi clicked why because if you notice abhishek bachchan amitabh bachchan they were also supporting the league no but uh, was, so, was it more of because it's an, it's an indian sport or a very indigenous sport that's why it receives more amount of attention than basketball maybe that that is also a very good possibility but other indian sports have also like you know you uh, okay i'm not commenting on that but if you notice uh, yeah like you said kabaddi because it's indian sport it did we we had a kabaddi world cup and stuff but then if you notice it is meant to just look at the way they jumped one point they were literally earning 2 lakhs was the highest paid and one or two seasons later they were earning 80 lakhs like that jump was significant because you know you have simple like because sachin was the owner of kerala yuvraj singh used to go support kerala just like that lot of other celebrities used to go support abhishek bachchan while they were you know uh, uh, working uh, while because they owned uh, jaipur pink panthers so and like you said yes the indian sport thing was definitely an aspect in regard uh, to towards the end uh, like how far is betting very ethical in uh, in like especially if you go through even several committees as well like even the mutkal committee or forward they said that like if you legalize betting there's a, a chance that the, the black money gets reduced as such and he, but then you also had a high you also had the, the news about the state government and the and the high court of karnataka also talking about regulation of these online betting as such so as per speaking about dream 11 or other betting apps how far is it like how do you how do you differentiate between like those people who were accused of betting a few a few years ago right now making it ethical is going to be going against the illegality or legality aspect, uh, aspect as well so how far is it ethical as such see in terms of ethicality see this is a very 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 big concept okay and we um, so now starting off with um, the mpl if you notice that is not betting that is fantasy hmm. so we should always not believe that to be as betting uh in regard with uh, you just said the previous uh, guys who were talking that was more of fixing and betting you know that involved that once again the sanctity of sports is where 
it was gone, you know. You can't like go tell a like go and tell you what guy bro purposely missed the shot. I'll buy you some more. Literally, but that was done with big amount of money, mm-hmm. and obviously you can't fixing sports. Sports is something that's you know the excitement. It's like let's that that let's take example for that Rajasthan Royals match where the fixing happened. It's like you know you should charge them for. making like i i would charge them under fraud also you know cuz all of us millions of people watching that match ended up getting fooled you know cuz we thought that actually happened we thought we are looking at it from an excitement perspective we are loving it enjoying the moment and to know that that was all fixed that is really disappointing so that is that that is that's putting that aside betting in india um in terms of it being legalized i don't know yet i don't know if i'm qualified enough to answer it but i don't think india has reached you know a state we need to take it you know it's it's a very slow process the way they've started with mpl dream league although that's not betting it's fantasy that's a start although that also there's a lot of discrepancies but betting in india see if you if you go to the uk betting the odds and stuff is it's it's, it's the system is made it's proper it's set it's ready india can bring in that system but for indians to understand how it works all together when it comes to sports and it should not you know things like this can easily you know be manipulated in india the sports system itself is not ready it's not fixed and it's not it's not fully built yet the sports the entire sports industry the sports infrastructure it's not you know firmly fixed yet so until and unless that isn't ready to go i don't think betting can be implemented it can't be it can't, it can't be brought into the indian market but uh, yeah i'm saying in india people can't you know accept the fact that you know they lost a lot that happens so if you see in the us you know in the uk when you lose a bet people are like okay fine in india there would be so many fights in regard with betting and and a lot of things so there's a lot of factors that need to be taken into place so india itself is not yet the sports infrastructure is not yet form ready to you know sustain all of those possibilities so betting will take time but once again yeah it's, it's up to the sports it's up to the state governments like uh, i think hyderabad or telangana uh, sorry uh, telangana or ap uh, remote i mean they they uh, declared you know dream 11 and this thing also to be illegal so it's it's up to them but yeah that's my understanding and yeah it will take time like you, like you, like like you said in dream 11 you aren't really fixing a match so basically unlike the the uh, other person of when you are uh, you are saying uh, put a no ball or or go over the and those kind of instruction as well over here it's it's you are behind the screen and also it's it's more of an open kind of an open platform as well and there's no d- discrepancies with regard to illegality so that, that's a very fair point and uh, I, i think, think see betting is more like one it's it's one instance you know so <clears throat> dream 11 is a fantasy where you're selecting your 11 players and they might do well they might not do well now what uh, 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 now betting has a similar ideology but you're betting you're literally saying that you know uh, i have odds that this guy is going to hit a six today mm-hmm. okay that's the you can bet on that one instance in football you bet that jesse lingard will score a goal in two matches he will score three goals for sure okay but in uh, fan in uh, dream 11 you're not typically betting you can you're selecting players from two teams and depending on how they play you get points hmm. so it is there is a similarity in terms of the concept but it's entirely different it's not the same that betting is based on a particular scenario like probability Sorry. of how how far they can score or or they based on the previous matches they have played or previous kind of tournaments they have played as such is, is exactly how... so so that is betting is more on one scenario like even horse ra- horse horse riding the betting they, they 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 bet on a horse that this horse is going to win today hmm. but dream 11 you're not typically doing that you're selecting 11 people you're selecting your captain your vice captain and it's based on how they play all together yeah and uh, how far does public sentiment play uh, with regard to a player so example if we take oj simpson as well you had a huge amount of public su- uh, public support when the when he had faced that uh, the trial as such so how far does public 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 support play does it play negative or does it play a very positive role like it become very toxic in some in some instances or in, or in some instances it, it kind of goes against the 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 legal battle as such or or even in in general as well i'll tell you before i go to the oj simpson part i'll tell you uh, just take rishant for example okay he was uh, alleged for something and he was removed and people still hate him for that mm. 
okay but look um, david warner steve smith were caught for uh, tampering the ball but the indians were literally welcoming them back they were screaming full party for them if you mm-hmm. notice yeah shrishant didn't he still gets hated when he was coming back to cricket recently nobody cared but when when two others not even from our country indians are sitting and adoring you know the fact that david warner and steve smith is coming back to cricket whereas they also they literally cheated as well they cheated on the field and so so i'm saying yes definitely the public does they they can be toxic this is an evident thing you know if if indians can you know support if indians can scream cheer on for australians who cheated and you know they still continue to disrespect an indian i don't know but in regard with oj simpson if you notice in that case also it was filled with manipulation i think the defense was oj simpson said they were they were like from a legal perspective they were awesome they made the case a case of racism if mm. you know yeah and if you watch the oprah winfrey show there was a live reaction of the judgment being read out mm. and you can see all the blacks were the ones support all the blacks were the ones cheering and the whites were the ones like they be- they firmly believed that oj simpson did it Hmm. and even uh, in the in the netflix documentary they showed as to how the jury uh, if you notice the blacks wanted a tv show like the the jury gets to watch a tv show because they're all locked up in that hotel they're not allowed to watch tv or go out so there was they were playing one tv show and they were choosing between two so there was one tv show of blacks and one tv show of whites and the whites wanted that blacks wanted this so i'm saying wow. obviously the crowd does play a big role the public does play a role in that regard yeah. but they can be toxic once again prishant <laughs> <laughs> yes definitely definitely so yeah that, i think that brings us to the end so uh, before we close ryan if you have any final word with regard to the the sports scenario and how, and how far we can really uh, improve on transparency and also welcoming new talent as well and how there can be uh, different bodies uh, looking on to this kind of uh, irregularities as such so those kind of things don't harm the industry in the future see you guys uh, i'll tell you one thing um, doping i'll give an example because because i recently spoke with a a lawyer who deals with doping he told me all of this the doping scenario before was something else okay before like let's say i'm getting dope tested i could like you know ensure that joel is in the bathroom and he gives the he gives a sample because i know i've consumed something that's going to that's not going to help me i mean that obviously that i will test positive for doping i can like ensure joel is in the bathroom i can go take his sample and go give it and i can go that's how it is very easy to manipulate the system today there is something known as the nada the national anti doping agency and also the wada the world anti doping agency so today the level at which doping is being monitored it's brilliant you know at the smallest they are catching almost every instant it's near to impossible to manipulate the system because uh, this this lawyer itself told me that you know a sample it goes and it's opened only at the lab and there is a seal only if the seal is closed they will open it so there is a system so in terms of the sports industry um, the legality is coming in the industry is getting better so if you notice even re- last ipl one of the young players was you know approached for a similar instance you know of match fixing and he he immediately you know told the authorities and they dealt with it so i'm saying the system is getting better so please don't you know this i mean stop watching sports for that one reason because mm. every 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 aspect there are big mistakes there are big manipulations there are bigger bigger manipulations that are happening and uh, come on you guys still watch movies we know what happens in movies okay all together from from all perspectives so uh sports is something that's we enjoy i think even people who don't play sports enjoy watching sports for that matter cuz it's not only entertainment it's like you know sports i feel see if you look at the us for example let's say you know northern carolina is playing a match okay the college university team is playing a match the entire state sits and supports them okay mm-hmm. so sports is more of an emotion so i i would request every one of you to you know take it that way and i think yeah in general people do support sports persons like i have friends who support me 
so just like that continue supporting and play play sports whenever you can because sports is the best sort of recreational activity even today uh, i'm so i i was i i'd say devastated because i'm not able to play but you know i i would just take the tennis rackets and with my dad we would play you know we just hit the ball on the tennis i mean hit the ball on the wall and play tennis so sports is something like that and in terms of opportunities also do explore it if you have a passion in sports only if you have a passion in sports there's one set of people who look at the glamorous side of sports thinking it's very cool to work in the sports field uh, <laughs> you won't be appreciated sorry the ones if you if you love sports truly uh, try to you know let's say you're a management student try to explore a career in sports management because that will sports use use if you love sports truly use sports as a methodology to love what you're studying and that's what i'm doing today the reason as to why i'm enjoying the study of laws because i'm implementing that i'm implementing sports in every aspect like today if my teacher tells me to do a in terms of contracts when i was asked to take a case law uh, everyone would take a case law that's first taught in class most of the time so and i would take something in regard with sports so it helps me i have interest and i'm learning something out of the box also so sports is beautiful altogether so that's all i have to say yeah suddenly feel you because uh, you were like uh, it, it it feels so sad to be in the sports committee especially in, in the current circumstances because you are, you are unable to play as well so then that, that that's suddenly one thing uh, if you also if you, if you have any future projects coming up as well or if anything you like 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 to plug in as well you can just uh, t- tell the audience as such which or what future, future projects or, or anything you would like to plug in with regard to what uh, what you what you'll be doing in, in, uh, with regard to sport or, or, or anything in general as well see i nobody like everybody else nobody knows what's going to what's there in store for us projects as such no i don't have any project in regard to sports i do have small small goals uh, like you know to win the all india inter university basketball that's far away from happening then yes i i do want to start my own sports foundation because uh, I feel your yeah, studying sports law will help me in that regard because you know I want to tackle the corruption involved in sports and if you notice one aspect as to why sports uh, you have a lot of rural I feel a lot of talent is wasted in India provided our population we should be dominating the olympics yeah. and I feel a lot of talent is wasted because of corruption and one is financial status so being a sports lawyer I would love to you know tackle the corruption aspect and hopefully if i'm rich enough start my own foundation and you know fund a lot of athletes who who can't you know get through cuz let me tell you guys you all think that sports is something that cannot give you a career i'll be honest uh, although i'm not headed that way if you notice today look at the players who play for vijaya bank and in india and stuff they all have secured bank jobs i know a branch manager who's played basketball for india because of that he's a he's working there so and don't think sports can't give you a career it can definitely give you a career but like i said the entire system in india needs to be fixed in such a way that the sports persons are educated properly and they know how they can you know make use make make a good advantage because if you know a lot of sports persons today are on the streets it's because they are not the, the right education was not given to them so yeah hopefully i know a few sports lawyers who are working towards you know coming up with a a program that educates all the athletes at a you know at the starting stages of their career so yeah that's it yeah. from my side so what didn't you heard first uh, ryan's going to be starting a foundation soon uh with especially the article <laughs> not soon bro come on I, i'm just 20 maybe when i'm 40 or 50 yeah definitely we, we, we would love to see that as well and also thanks uh, ryan once again for stressing on the entire sports industry and the impact uh, it it has created as well also once again i'm playing to all of you do check out the cappuccino uh, some really good cool content coming up there and is uh, he also speaks about several aspects of sports law along with several sportsmen and also with lawyers as well in in this channel called global sports review and he uh, heads a show called the sudan sports so do check it do check it out, out as well and finally as the co-founder of fantastic arena india's only fun port he definitely uh, brings in a, a different table with regard to gaming arenas in airport so thank you once again ryan for coming forward to uh, argument to podcast thank you so much once again i would like to tell everyone uh, thank you joel for calling me it's it's gr- great you know i think argumenter has been doing a brilliant job 
<laughs> Although I'm trying to do other sort of content, let me be honest. Argumenters, you know, they're discussing social legal issues, which is very important because today's world nobody cares about what's happening around, and they they bring in a really interesting perspective, especially the way they bring in the uh, the the thumbnails and stuff are created. It's really interesting. They discussed about Family Man, uh, and and I, I like the fact that you know they also not just talk about things that's happened before; they talk about what's happening now. and it's very important and i'm glad you know to see i i definitely i directly stuck to my uh, you know my my not expertise what i like to do but these guys are like you know they've decided to take take up issues that you know is going to help the community all together so thank you so much for you know educating us through uh, argumento podcast joel your is a brilliant speaker as well i just want to tell all of you that and it's it's an honor to be a uh, the pleasure is mine so thank you so much Yeah thank you so much man thank you